Namaste. My name is Sage Roundtree. I'm coming to you from the Carborough Yoga Company in Central North Carolina with a practice focused on opening what we would call in yoga the heart center, the front of the chest. This is an area that gets really tight in us as we spend our day driving or typing or mousing or writing. Using our hands in front of our bodies, we can get pretty closed off in this space. And so in honor of Valentine's Day, we're gonna to work today to get this space a lot more open. Along the way, we'll also focus on the front of the hips, an area that gets tight as we sit as well. I'd love for you to have a rolled prop. It could be a towel or a blanket. What I've done here is just roll a yoga blanket into a cylinder. And we'll start lying down on our backs with this prop underneath the mid back. If you need extra support, you could have a pillow for your head. You might even like to have a second rolled blanket that goes underneath the backs of your knees. So find yourself a support. You could also use a yoga mat just rolled up. Lay it crosswise on your mat and come back to rest over it. We want it right in the mid-back, the area of the spine that is concave to the front. And when we come back to rest over it, we can fiddle with the position of knees and legs. If your low back isn't so sure about this, you could have the soles of the feet down on the floor and the knees propped together. You could take cobbler pose in the legs. Get yourself settled. Let the back of the head rest down on the floor. If you need a little more support, you can add a little pillow there. Spread the arms off the hips. That's where we'll start with the arms in an inverted V position. Close the eyes if it feels good. Take a few slow breaths here, feeling especially the opening along the base of the rib cage with every breath in. Feel the settling into the support of the blanket with every breath out. As you, grow, as you grow accustomed to this shape, try taking the arms out just a little bit higher. The higher up we move the arms, the more we stretch into the lower regions of the pecs. So when the arms come out to the side, you might feel a different experience running down the front of the chest, even down the fronts of the arms as well. Again, slow, deep, and full breaths, breathing especially into the center of the chest. Try taking your arms a little bit higher from a T position up to an inverted V, like you're making a Y with the arms and the torso. Stretch might slide a little bit lower or into your underarms. Check your low back is okay with this. Settle your weight into the support of your rolled blanket or mat and have a few more deep breaths. Finally, try taking your hands together with your elbows bent out to three o'clock and nine o'clock and your hands at 12 o'clock. It's like the A in the YMCA dance. A different stretch still for the front of the chest. Continue to feel the support of the rolled bolster underneath you. We'll take our last few breaths in the supported back bend. As you do, close your eyes. And take the time to set an intention for the practice. This intention might have to do with opening your heart, with releasing any tension you hold in your chest, or with some other project that comes to mind.
Start slowly to shift the hands down alongside the hips, to bend the knees and rest the feet on the floor. To shift over to one side, take a breath or two on your side, rest for a moment. And make your way all the way up to sitting. This rolled blanket or mat that you have can be your friend as we come to sit for the next few moves. It can come underneath the back of the, the bottom of the pelvis and the sitting bones, and the knees can pull out to the sides. If you can't find a comfortable seat right now, don't worry about it. You can stand on your knees or do these next few stretches from a standing position entirely. Take a second to roll the shoulders down the back, to feel the weight even across the pelvis, to let the knees sink below the level of the hips. Let's start to pulse the hands with the breath, up and down, entire arms moving up and down. Inhales to reach up, exhales to lower down. Let that be your rule. Inhales up, exhales down, but beyond that, feel free to experiment with the way you move your arms any way that makes sense. You could take the arms into the front to feel the stretch in the back. You could take your arms back behind you to feel that opening across the chest, a release along the front. Nice slow movement. If your arms are coming back behind you, you might feel the effects of that supported back bend that we just finished. Inhales lift. Exhales lower. Any freestyling you want to do, rolling the wrists on the way down, this is your practice to explore the upper body in any way that makes sense. Let's keep moving the arms up and down with the breath and add a twist along the spine. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, twist to one side, hand comes to opposite knee, same side hand can come to the hip or the floor. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, go the other way. We'll pulse this twice more to either side. Four more breaths. Inhales to lift. Exhales to twist. As you twist, let the twist come from the belly up through the chest. Not from an angling of the hips. The hips stay steady and the twist moves up the spine. Inhales, lift. Exhale, twist. Last time to this side. Inhale, lift. Exhale, last time, pulsing this way. Back to the first side, we'll hold a few breaths. Inhale to lift up. Exhale, settle into the twist. I'm twisting to my right, so my left hand is on my right thigh. I might roll the back of the left hand to the thigh to spin the front of the chest a little bit more open. External rotation of the arm bone instead of internal rotation. Back hand could be on fingertips on the floor or come to rest on your hip. That works perfectly nice if you're standing as well. Stay broad across the chest. Remember that our intention for the practice is openness through the heart. Remember any individual intention you set. If you've got the back of the hand to the thigh, roll the palm back down toward the knee and inhale, take your back arm, lift it up and over. Add a little side stretch. When we do this, we don't want to scissor the arms in front of the chest to make an X symbol. Instead, we want to stay open. Lean, feel the release coming down the lats, the backside arm. You can look down or forward or up. One more breath here. And with an exhale, let's make that X. Cross the elbows in front of the chest. Scoop the tailbone under. Think cat back. Drop the chin down toward the chest. You could gently roll the chin from side to side. And steady your head. Next breath in. Lift both arms up. Exhale, we'll twist in the other direction. Things could feel a little bit different as we twist this way. In fact, you may find that this side is a little bit harder if it's your non-natural side to twist toward. So maybe you don't go quite as far. We check that the pelvis is steady, that the twist is moving up from the spine. We remember the option to flip to the back of the hand and to have your supporting arm be resting on the hip or fingertips to the floor.
If you've got the back of the hand to the thigh, roll the palm back down. Slide the hand out toward the knee. Inhale, lift your back arm up and exhale. Take a side bend without a collapse into the space that we're trying to open, instead staying broad across the chest. The shoulder rolls back and slides down without being jammed or forced. You can look down, forward, or up. One more breath. As the breath goes out, take the hands down into the X again. Cat back, scoop the tailbone, roll into your heart without a complete collapse. It's a nice release for the upper back while staying broad across the front. With the next breath in, let's lift the arms up and exhaling, we'll take the hands down by the sides. If you're sitting cross-legged, here's an opportunity to go to your non-default cross of the legs. You could roll back into the hips and change the cross. If you're realizing that sitting doesn't feel comfortable, this is a good time to come up to standing instead. Inhale, lift the arms on the breath again, interlace the fingers. Push the hands forward. One more cat back while staying broad across the front so we're not squeezing the shoulders up toward the ears. We're keeping them down. We're keeping some space along the front of the heart as we push the hands forward. Sneak a peek up at your pinkies and notice which pinky is on top. I see my left pinky on top. I might even say that to myself. Left pinky's on top. Well, inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, take the hands together to meet behind the back, put the opposite pinky on the outside. So now I've got my right pinky on the outside. If your chest is tight, this might feel like it's already plenty of stretch. You might like to take your knuckles to your sacrum and squeeze your elbows in toward each other and let that be the stretch for the front of the chest. If you've got a little bit more uh, flexibility in the front of the shoulders, a little bit more room, you might start to straighten the arms. It could be that you can do this with the heels of the hands together. It might be that you need the heels of the hands to be separate. Remember, open is across the front of the chest. We take the shoulders back. We squeeze the elbows or the palms toward each other. And if it feels good without thrusting the hips forward, we can start to lift the chest up toward the top of the wall that you're facing. And even to lean back a little bit more from this heart space, leaning back into a light back bend, no crunching in the low back. One more breath. Push down into your knees. Inhale, lift your torso up. Relax your arms down by your sides. Roll forward onto hands and knees. You can move your rolled blanket out of the way now. As we come onto hands and knees, let's take the opportunity to squirm around a little bit. This squirming might mean cat and cow. Inhaling, rolling through the spine, coming into a little back bend. Exhaling, going the other way. It might mean taking a little bit of side to side motion. Finishing up, release for the spine. Get into the front of the hips now, and a little bit deeper back bending to open the front of the chest. Take your right foot forward toward your right thumb. You're in a low lunge. If it turns out that this feels like it's too intense for the front of the left hip, you can turn the toes under and walk the foot in either a little bit or a lot. Everything that we could do here can happen from a very short warrior one stance. Anywhere along the spectrum, back heel up or down, back knee up or down. See about climbing up, hands to the right knee. Hips and shoulders square toward the short front side of your mat here. Left hip is rolling forward slightly, right hip pulling back, hips moving down toward the back of the front heel. Let's try pulsing, inhale to lift, exhale to lower, just with the left arm. Inhale, lift the arm up, exhale, lower it down. As we do this, we should feel this stretch grow stronger, inhaling up into the front of the left hip and exhaling down to release. Three more for a total of five. Inhale, pulse up. Exhale, slide down. Slow and with your breath, which name may not exactly match my cueing, absolutely fine. Inhale to lift, stay up. Exhale, settle here, relax the left shoulder down the back. Slide the hips down toward the right heel. Now a side bend pulse. 
We're inhaling here. With an exhale, lean the left arm over to the right. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, a little lean. If it helps you with stability, you could prop the forearm on the right knee instead of having the palm to the knee. Two more pulses, about five of them here. Exhale to lean. Inhale to lift and exhale to lean. Let's hold the lean for just a couple breaths. Remember the hips are settling down, big release for the front of the left hip, as well as for the left shoulder, and keeping the shoulder down and away from the ear, the front of the chest. So you bend over toward the right. With the next breath in, let's lift the left hand up. Find your balance there. Bring the right arm up to meet it. Inhale here, exhale, pull down cactus arms. Elbows slide down alongside the rib cage. Inhale to lift, exhale, pull down. We're engaging the rhomboids between the shoulder blades and the spine. Inhales, lift, exhale, slower. Two more. Last time, inhale, lift, exhale, pull down. Take the thumbs back a little bit. Take the palms toward the top of the wall. Last breath. With an exhale, we'll take the hands down to frame the right foot. Make a slow trip back to hands and knees or to downward facing dog if you prefer. Take your hands underneath your shoulders. And either rest in stillness to compare the left side with the right side or squirm around in some way that feels good. From tabletop, that might mean just shifting your hips or rolling your rib cage from downward facing dog, that might mean bending the knees or taking other motions that feel good. Same lunges and pulses on the other side. From your home base, step your left foot up toward your left thumb. You can reach back, pick it up, and put it there if that makes sense. Check that your left foot is wide of your right knee, not exactly in line with it, but a little bit wider. Remember the option, you can turn the toes under. You can do all of this movement from the back knee up, the back heel up, or step in a little bit shorter and have the back heel down for more stability. We'll take our time coming up to balance. Things will probably feel different on this side. Hips and shoulders square to the short edge of the mat. Left hip back, right hip forward. Left toes spread, settle down. Left palm on the left thigh or left elbow as we continue if that feels better. We'll pulse the right arm. Inhale to lift up. Exhale to lower down. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, lower down. Three more like that. Releasing around the shoulder, keeping the expanse of the chest nice and broad. One more swing, in and up, out and down. Then lift the right arm and keep it lifted. Settle in here for a breath or two. Find your balance. Now little pulses over toward the left. Inhale here. Exhale, side lean toward the left. Inhale to come up, square shoulder over hip. Exhale to lean, right shoulder over left. Three times more. It's a little movement through space. It may turn out to feel a little bit more wobbly than you expected. Move deliberately, slowly with control. As we lean over, let's hold. Take the right shoulder down the back. Stay broad across the chest. Inhale, right hand over right shoulder, over right hip. Settle there. And then bring the left arm up to meet it. Five cactus pulses. Exhale, pull down. Inhale, lift up. Engaging the back of the body, releasing the front. In and up, out and down. Two more. Hold for a few breaths in the cactus arms. Thumbs are moving back. Elbows are coming down toward the outer edges of the rib cage.
Breathe in here. And breathing out, take the hands down to frame the left foot. Ease your way back, back to a tabletop position. Drop palms under shoulders, or come back to downward facing dog if that would feel better. Again, a little bit of free play time to move your body in some way that feels good. To notice how the front of the hips feel, how the front of the chest feels, this area across the heart. If you're in downward facing dog, drop your knees down, take the edges of your mat, pull it in, give yourself a little triple deluxe fold here. That makes a nice standing area for your knees. So you come up to stand. We're gonna come into three versions of camel pose. Please choose the ones that work for you and skip the ones that don't. The first is a lateral reach. Let's start with the right hand on the right hip. Inhale, lift the left arm up and exhale, lean it over the right shoulder. So we've got the side stretch running up the left. If things are feeling good, you can start to lean back a little bit more, keeping the hips forward over the knees without thrusting and crunching into the low back. Little bit of softness, little extra length in the low back. The side lean here. If you've got more space to come back, you could try turning the toes underneath so that they hit the mat and taking the right hand to the right heel and leaning back a little bit farther. Stay broad across the front of the chest. Remember your intention. Coming to a breath in, lift your way up. Change sides, left hand to left hip. Right arm lifts up, and right arm leans over the left. Keep the hips forward, keep the low back long. Keep expanding across the front, deep breaths into the front. Remember, if you've got room, you could turn the toes under and take the fingertips to the left foot, maybe even to the inner edge of the left foot so that the left shoulder is open. When this lean back feels even, we'll come back up to center. Inhale, push into the knees. Exhale, come down to sit on your heels. Between sides here, between um, movements into camel pose, we can rest still, or if your body is really asking for some kind of counter pose, feel free to move it in some way that feels nice. Second trip to camel pose. Inhale, lift yourself up to hands and knees. We'll keep the tops of the feet down for this trip. Heels of the hands come to the lower ribs and the fingertips fan out so that the thumbs are on the outer hips and the fingers are spread wide. This can help us remember to stay broad across the low back instead of lifting the tailbone. The tailbone moves down and forward just a touch. Elbows squeeze together like when we had the fingertips interlaced earlier. Shoulders roll down the back. Hips stay forward. Inhale, lift the chest up, and exhale, lean back from the point over the heels of the hands like you're draping back from there. You could keep your chin tucked in towards your chest if that feels best for you. You can let the chin rise up toward the top of the wall that you're facing. You could lift the entire face up toward the ceiling. Don't just fling your head back with abandon though. If you're taking your head back, do it deliberately and carefully. Full breaths. I know it can feel pretty intense when we come here. See where you could relax a little bit more and open into it. We'll push into the knees to work our way out. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, come back to sit on the heels. Take a breath in stillness, and then if your body is really asking for a counter pose, give it a counter pose. You can squirm around a little bit. You could lean yourself forward into child's pose. Notice the feeling across the front of the chest. Third and final lift up to camel. When we go here, if you'd rather stay with the previous version or even go back to the side bending stretch, that's a nice option. We'll inhale to come stand on the knees. 
If you wanted to keep the hands on the low back but increase just a little, you could have the heels of the hands down now and the fingertips working up with the elbows squeezing in toward each other. You could also turn the toes under because they make a pretty nice stepping stone as we work our hands down in the direction of the floor. We keep the hips forward, we keep the tailbone long, the low back long. We can reach one hand for one foot and then the other hand up and around for the other foot. The hips are moving forward. Remember, we don't just fling the head back. If we're gonna take the gaze up, we do it slowly. Let's go for three, four, or five slow breaths here. Stay broad across the chest. Remember your intention. We'll come out carefully, one hand and then the other hand can come to the hips. We'll push down into the knees, lift ourselves up. Slide back to sit on the heels for a beat. And then move to counter pose. We could take our triple fold out of the way now. Stretch the arms either long overhead on the mat as the forehead comes down to the floor, or slot the hands back alongside the feet. A little bit more of a release for the upper and lower back simultaneously. A few slow breaths here. Take your hands underneath your shoulders. Roll your way back up to sit. Shift your hips to one side, locate your roll. We're gonna finish back up on the roll. If you enjoyed where we began with the roll underneath the thoracic spine, the mid-back, we can go there. Or we can move the roll down a little bit and finish in a supported bridge. More opening for the front of the hips that way. For your supported bridge, your legs would come forward, forward, forward. The back of the pelvis will come up to the roll and we'll lay down, we'll lie down on the spine with the back of the pelvis supported nicely by the roll. If you feel steady on your roll, you can walk your feet out away from center. You position as you need to when you get here. Take the arms to some position that feels good. It could be off to the Y position, out to the T, or down a little bit in the inverted V. If this seems like it might be interesting, but it's not quite um, enough sensation for you, you can fold your blanket in half, or you can use a yoga block to support the back of the pelvis here. Idea is to get the sacrum up and elevated, and the front of the hips open. Settle back into your breath. Bring your attention back to your intention. Please take the time to rest here as long as suits you. As you continue to rest, if you'd like to leave the back bend and come to flatness, you'll bend the knees, lift the pelvis off the support, slip it out of the way, come down to rest flat on your back, for corpse pose. And when you have had enough time in rest, you'll move yourself slowly and gently, taking the time to rest on the side and spending a few moments sitting to appreciate the effects of the practice when it ends. Namaste.